This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Can you picture it? That vintage crackle of a 1950s television, the Disneyland logo surrounded by those dancing animated stars, then a quick swoosh of pixie dust and bam, there she is, Tinkerbell. She brought the magic to Disneyland from the moment it was dreamt up. So when the park opened, where was she? Yeah, that's right. This iconic Disney mascot, which was heavily featured throughout all forms of Disney entertainment, didn't make it into Disneyland until a couple years after the park opened, but it was worth the wait because her introduction was unlike anything Disneyland had done before. What's going on, Tinkerbell fans? It's Dan here, about to go down a deep, deep rabbit hole full of pixie dust. But before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button because every time you hit the subscribe button, a fairy gets its wings. And I'm not even gonna tell you what happens when you hit the bell button. It's so magical you can't even comprehend it. Go ahead, click it. Congrats, I've unlocked you to a world of magical Dan notifications. <laughs> In 1958, at a special Disney-sponsored concert at the Hollywood Bowl in California, an incredibly special thing happened. For the first time ever, right before everyone's eyes, Tinkerbell flew. The special family concert series was held to promote Disneyland and Walt, inspired by the many over the top high wire circus acts of the time, chose a tiny trapeze artist for the grand finale of the concert. Tinkerbell, framed in spotlight, glittering, zipped down a hundred foot line, sparkling across the stage. There she was, up in the sky, really flying. And it would change the theme park experience forever. We can't talk about flying Tinkerbell without talking about Tiny Klein. And you just met her at the Hollywood Bowl during her first performance as Tinkerbell. A Hungarian immigrant, she came to America when she was just 14 as a dancer under the name Helen Deutsch. And instead of following suit and spending her days in a factory doing needlework, she escaped the boring life to become a burlesque dancer. It wasn't long until she caught the eye of a Wild West trick horse rider, and soon the two were married, bringing her into the life of circus performers. She started at the bottom of the ladder, performing as a painted statue girl like you see in Times Square, before working her way up to a Roman rider on horses. But Tiny Klein was unique. She was incredibly small. At just four foot ten, she discovered she had quite the knack for aerial stunts. And it wasn't long before she was billed as the Iron Jaw Act of 1932. She was arrested after swinging a thousand feet in the air over Times Square to promote her New York residencies. At last I found a safe way to cross Times Square. She was a staple of the Ringling Brothers Circus for the next 25 years, dazzling millions with her high wire act, hanging from nothing but her teeth. That's right, the first Tinkerbell had a jaw made of iron and pixie dust. Could you imagine if this woman bit you? The damage that she would do? The trauma that your body would have forever if you were to be clamped down on by the chompers of Tiny Klein? There was not a stake she met that she couldn't conquer. So Tiny Klein had the gig. After that amazing performance in 1958, she was asked to return as a regular Disney Park staple starting in 1961, just after the construction of the Matterhorn. She was dressed in her Tinkerbell outfit backstage, then covered in a large coat, then traveled through the park with half of her fly team to the Matterhorn Mountain. Climbing over 200 stairs inside the Matterhorn, wearing a small sequin dress and carrying detachable wings, she approached the dangling 784 foot cable that hung 147 feet in the air. Tiny Klein, at the age of 70, was ready for Disneyland's first flight as Tinkerbell. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in Disneyland, we now invite you to turn to our Sleeping Beauty Castle in the center of the Magic Kingdom. The cable snaked from the high peak of the Matterhorn to just beyond Sleeping Beauty's castle, where the other half of Tink's team await including two giant footballers who wait anxiously on a catching tower, firmly holding a giant mattress. A technician checks the line one last time and then attaches the wings and hooks Klein to the cable. He grabs her by the ankles, 
The signal is given and he heaves her forward and lets go, launching Tinkerbell into a tethered free fall where she rocketed at 30 miles an hour towards the footballers. She was terrified. Since Tiny had gained fame swinging from her iron jaw, she had never looked down before. She was looking down now. The ride lasted 30 seconds, and as she crash landed into the padding, fireworks began pouring into the sky. This was Tiny Klein's last job. Already a grandmother, she did the jump for nearly three years while actively battling stomach cancer. And to set many of the legacy requirements for all future flying Tinkerbells, to fly, it's rumored that you must be under 105 pounds or around there and approximately four foot 10 to five foot two. Klein once said, every night when the searchlights come up to pick out Tinkerbell up here on the mountain, I'm young again. She passed away less than a year after her last performance. After Klein, a 19-year-old French gymnast, Mimi Zerbini, performed the role for a single summer before a longtime performer, Judy Kay, took over until 1983. Judy Kay was the daughter of a lion tamer and an aerialist performer who practically grew up in the circus and later ran a circus talency agency for Disney events. Are you picking up on a little bit of a theme here? She flew until 1983 when the new Fantasyland construction began, interrupting the landing zone of Tinkerbell, and Tinkerbell didn't fly for nearly a year. In 1983, in preparation for New Fantasyland's opening, a new Tinkerbell was auditioned and given to the experienced aerial performer, Gina Rock. The costume had a complete makeover for New Fantasyland, and I will call this the Disco Bell. God now are the sequins, and in their place, many tiny mirrors. Here you can see a great picture of Gina Rock with the full suit, wing attachments, wig, tethered wand, right on top of the Matterhorn, ready to jump. And my favorite part of researching this section of the Tinkerbell history is just how many mirrors they could fit on this tiny woman. Look at this. The first one just looks like a Flintstones disco bikini, and then it just becomes more and more and more and more. I love it. I'm blinded by it. They sewed a mirror under her wig at one point. Look at that. It's ridiculous. So Tinkerbell literally operated like a disco ball. She was covered in mirrors that were faceted and facing every direction. And when a spotlight hit it, man, the light flew in every which direction, filling the whole area. It was, it was cool. She was, like a, she was like a glittering satellite in the sky. In 2005, Remember Dreams Come True fireworks landed at Disneyland. I don't know if you guys remember, but they, they built this giant treehouse tower behind Pinocchio's and Big Thunder Mountain that hid a rigging system that would allow for a brand new type of Tinkerbell flight. This new cable cam system is similar to what you see them use in sports ball sports for big strong men to like film them so that not big strong men at home can watch it and be like, yeah, big strong men. <laughs> I don't know, why do you guys watch sports? I don't get it. Oh. Anyway, thanks for the camera technology. Tinkerbell flies real cool now. <laughs> she was a real fairy. I love watching videos of Remember Dreams Come True fireworks because Tinkerbell comes in and she swoops down under the trees and then comes up over the castle and then slides around. It's, it's, it's amazing. I absolutely love it. It's so cool. I love all the press relating to this tower in Fantasyland. I found an odd article about it someone posted on a forum a couple years ago. I don't know if this is an official press release or an official article or what, right? But my favorite bit is at the end <laughs> and where they're like, instead of flying straight down, this now ends a 45 year chapter in Disney history where Tinkerbell will no longer slam head first into a mattress on top of an old tower. <laughs> oh, the times. With changes to how the wire worked, it also changed how the character would be seen by the audience. Now Tinkerbell wasn't making a direct straight route down to the castle. Instead, she would be actively flying up in the air and quite a distance away. And this really changed her visibility. So a new costume design to mimic a more traditional mascot head character look was rolled out, where all the features were enlarged and heightened, including a giant fiberglass head that paired really nicely with her paint job and giant black light spotlights. I mean, she really glows up there in the sky. It, it's, it's, quite, it's quite stunning. 
Plus, it opened up the door for this amazing controversy, this amazing rumor about Tinkerbell that I'm all the more happy to feed into. Let's talk about it, Tinker Bill. There are lots of rumors that circulate about flying Tinkerbell being performed by a man. The costume is heavy, so they have to be strong. The stunt, it's a, it's a stunt work, so a man has to do it. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, here's what I've gathered about the situation. Other than Baby New Year, which was a tiny man named Paul Castle, famous for being Mickey, who was thrown off the top of the Matterhorn in 1965, which is a whole other story, hashtag Baby New Year flies, four decades of great graceful, tiny, sequined female performers as Tinkerbell are very well documented. It's, it's not a man. It hasn't been a man. But that said, the new costume, which is this oversized face obscuring monstrosity, is very likely played by a man, or at least can be, as they share other responsibilities in the flight path, such as uh, flying characters like Dumbo in the Remember Dreams Come True fireworks. There are other characters that fly. All right. It's time to pack up the bags and, and head to orange country, Florida. For a decade of operations at Magic Kingdom, cast members were routinely asked where Flying Tinkerbell was. And they all said, as, as cast members do, just waving away all our questions, oh, Tinkerbell only flies in Disneyland or on TV with the help of animators. You know, cause she's a cartoon. Thanks, we get it. Thanks cast members. Yeah, no duh. Magic Kingdom specifically lacked a Matterhorn attraction, like next to the castle that would help Tinkerbell fly. There was really no clear idea of what Tinkerbell's flight path would be in the Magic Kingdom, because there wasn't a big spectacle. The castle was the spectacle. But after a few years, a plan was hatched. The tallest spire of Cinderella's castle, designed strong enough to withstand 110 mile an hour hurricane winds, would be wired up to a long runway on the rooftops of Tomorrowland. For the jump, Tinkerbell and a single safety technician would ascend to the rear roof of the castle, then climb a series of tight ladders up through the spire to a very small landing. It's literally only large enough for Tinkerbell and one safety assistant. She is then hooked to the line with a battery pack for her wings, her wig, her outfit, and her tethered wand. And then boom, off she goes, she jumps. On the other side of the line, two technicians anxiously wait, ready on standby, holding a giant net on the edge of Tomorrowland's roof. I'm talking like the building laugh floor is in that you like spin around last in the people mover. You've all been in it. I know you have. And on the top of it at night, you can just picture it. These two guys sweating, holding a big fish net, waiting to catch a ferry. That's <laughs> flying 30 miles an hour through the sky. And that net isn't designed to catch her. The net is just designed to slow her down enough for her to safely thud into the crash pad at the end of the line. <laughs> July 3rd, 1985, a record-breaking crowd of 60,000 people gathered in the Magic Kingdom hub to watch Tinkerbell do her first flight. It's amazing. For the next 28 years of Tinkerbell's flights in Florida, she launched from the castle as sort of an opening act for the fireworks, similar to Tinkerbell's flight path in Disneyland. Fantasy in the Sky, 1985. She was essentially right after a small interlude of, of orchestral music. She pops out and the fireworks start. And then Wishes, 2003, there's a small vocal intro, a little monologue, and then boom, Tinkerbell kicks off the show and flies out into the sky. Now here's an interesting thing about Disney World Tinkerbell. She's a lot higher up in the sky and she's lit by very harsh lighting and has a very bulky suit that's full of lights uh, and different accessories that make her uh, extremely visible up there in the sky. And this has only fueled the Tinkerbell rumors again at Disney World. But I can assure you, uh, just because the the, the, the the costume is bulky and the lighting is harsh, the, it's, it's almost always a female presenting performer, even at Disney World. Tinkerbell's closer than she's ever been flying at Florida than in California. You can you can literally look into her eyes if you're stand, sitting at the right spots in the Tomorrowland uh, area or in the hub of the Magic Kingdom. She's very visible, and if a man was performing it, it'd be pretty obvious. The costume gets a few changes here too in Florida. She starts off with some fun, you know, light up uh, dress thing and wings and a, and a wig. And then it turns into another light up dress thing with wings and a wig. But now she's got like 
She's got like antenna, like Mantis from Guardians that like kind of like light up her forehead. So that's cute, I guess. Oh boy. <laughs> Kenny, stop the video. Here's something we never get to do, man. <laughs> I'm usually the one starting up misinformation rumors. So now I finally have the chance to clear one up and settle my karma. I'm so here for this. Let's go back in time, shall we, to 2005, back in the age of forums, before YouTube was a thing that anyone cared about. This is a forum post on wdwmagic.com where they are actively discussing rumors about an animatronic puppet Tinkerbell that would fly in place of a human cast member actor. Oh my gosh, the outrage was real. People were like, oh, how could they do this? And other people were like, nah, they're not gonna do this. That's a dumb rumor. Well, 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 as luck would have it, I went to IAPA this year. IAPA 2022, baby. And that is where I stumbled upon a company called Lawless Industries. These are the people that make all of the parade float guts. You know, they made the they made the 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 structure for the fire breathing dragon. They make all the parade floats. They make those fairy things, like those fairy Roombas. This is that's them, all right? And in 2005, at two o'clock in the morning, they did a test flight of a robotic, animatronic, Tinkerbell kite-like thing that could stand upright, flap its wings, turn its head, and wave its wand. It was real. It was real. And believe it or not, at the conference, they had footage of it. They had footage of it. It does look cool. And you know what? I like this. It kind of fits into the whole theme of the of the park. You know, like if hey, if we can put a robot there, let's put a robot there. That's how that's kind of been the staple of Disney Park thinking for a long time. So, you know, like I would have been happy for a robot tank. Would have been beyond thrilled. The the guys who run the company, they tell an incredible they're like, it's three o'clock in the morning. The lights aren't properly on. I couldn't see where the trolley was. And the biggest thing they said to me is, don't hit the castle, don't hit the castle, don't hit the castle. And so I'm flying blind, standing in the Magic Kingdom hub with a radio controller as Tinkerbell zipping back and forth and she never hit the castle, but he was able to make her fly all the way down and touch down on the sidewalk of the hub and then zip back up into the sky. Oh, the way he describes it is a be it's beautiful and amazing. And apparently he still has it and I'm working on getting pictures of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's declassify this, baby. Well, there it is. I figured it out. I, I debunked a rumor. I did it. Thank you, sweet baby Broadway Jesus, for delivering me into the sweet arms of this gift. Amen. All right, it's happily ever after time. Look, it is, was, and always will be the greatest fireworks show ever. It's so emotionally manipulative that like, I just can't get enough of it. And, it, and for the first time ever, Tinkerbell had a new firework flight path. She wasn't the opening act. She was now a grounded, rooted part of the firework story. She comes out at like the perfect moment. It's like this explosive catharsis at this musical medley's emotional climax, giving us all permission to go out and, and seek the magic in the world that we're currently living in. It's amazing. It brings tears to my eyes. Everyone loves this moment. You can fly. Kenny, just show it. Show it this time and this time. Show it a hundred times. Everyone loves this thing. You ever notice in the hub, right after Tinkerbell flies, and you look around after the fireworks are over, and all the trees are glowing? Kenny, you know what I'm talking about? It's like there's fireflies in the trees around the hub. I've always wondered, like, what is that supposed to be, like, thematically? Now I understand what it is. When Tinkerbell flies over the hub, she sprinkles pixie dust on all of us so that we can also fly with her. So around the hub, all of the trees are still glittering with Tinkerbell's pixie dust. That's what that is. I didn't know that before. That's even more magical than I could have ever possibly imagined. Kenny is not remotely interested in pixie dust, but I am. I'm over here doing the hard pixie dust work. <laughs> I guess the last flying Tinkerbell we got to see, got to see like some innovation with was the paint the night parade. Uh, there's that really cool float with that huge flower cone and Tinkerbell is seemingly like flying and bouncing in it. Thanks to this giant robotic arm that's masked in black and hidden at, 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 during the nighttime shows. Uh, it's really cool. I love it. So will we see new flying Tinkerbells in the future? I don't know, I hope so. I hope we see all different kinds of flying Tinkerbells. You know, she's hardly the only character to fly at Disney parks. I mean, we've had everything from like flying fish, flying houses, flying dogs, 
to even a flying aging Harrison Ford. So, you know, what hasn't flown here at the parks, honestly? And you gotta watch out when Harrison Ford's flying because he's known to crash. <laughs> that old man's got a death wish. I don't get it, man. <laughs> he just keeps crashing those blades and keeps getting back in them. <laughs> he really is Indiana Jones, isn't he? Sounds like we need to do a whole other video about flying characters at the parks. Hashtag give us more flying characters. It's a long hashtag, but I trust you with it. When Tinkerbell's up there and all that rigging, that's essentially like parachute rigging, what happens if she needs to pee? Well, thanks to Squarespace, she can head over to dizp.com and check out where all the best bathrooms are at the parks. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email notifications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. All important things we need when debating over our favorite poo spots at Disney World. Remember that rumor I found on those vintage theme park forums? Well, thanks to Squarespace, you can now have your own forums in the comment sections that can be filled with rumors that I will later debunk in 20 years. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales, tax and ship items across the globe. Display posts from your social profiles on your website. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Disney Dan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Well, there you go. There's been a fun deep dive into a rabbit hole, but it was, it was we went vertical, not down because she was flying, you get it. Let me know in the comments if you have any other flying Tinkerbell memories or, or stories, or, or maybe what's your first time you got to see a flying Tinkerbell. I love hearing from you guys. Or find me across all of the holy social media channels, such as Twitter for now, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Patreon, Twitch, and even our vlogging. Please stop vlogging, which is a request, but also the name of our vlog. So come check it out. Kenny's got merch now. Kenny, when do I get one of those shirts? All right, I'll buy one. All right, I'll see you guys later. I'm about to go buy some Please Stop Vlogging merch. Thanks for watching. You rock. You're charging how much for a shirt? <laughs>the thing I hate about the tiny Klein story that I didn't talk about, I didn't put in, but maybe is a great little after credits thing is that every night, the last bus to leave Anaheim would be at 10 30 at night. And Tinkerbell flew at 10 o'clock when the fireworks went off. And so every night after she flew, she would have to do a mad dash as a 70 year old grandma battling stomach cancer to change her costume get back into street clothes, run through the park, down a couple blocks to get to the bus stop in order to make it home in time. And if she missed that bus, she would, she would be in trouble. That's crazy to me that this like centralized pinnacle peak of performance for the parks, tiny client as Tinkerbell flying at night, the thing everyone's waiting for. And we couldn't like call her a cab, have a, have a car that was just there for her. She had, you know, like, like, uh, 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 I guess we just didn't respect cast members like from the start, from the start. She was 70 and flying through the sky with cancer, a grandmother, and you made her run to the bus. And what's crazy is management would line up at the exit of backstage and they would cheer her on every night. Everyone would be like, go tiny, go, go tiny, go. Someone could have just driven her. Just, 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 just. That makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. If you see an elderly person, help them.